Hey guys, Dale here, back with some more RimWorld, and welcome to our final episode of Deserters. Uh, this is going to be, I think, very minimal cuts, if any at all. Uh, we're going to talk through our colonists a little bit first. We'll like take a look at our base kind of here for the last episode, and then we will head out on our next mission. So I've got them kind of like grouped up. Uh, we have Rad here kind of wearing his own like little custom force apparel. He's wearing like an Altex robe instead of like the actual like Jedi Sith garb. Um, he is wearing like force user tunic under it. So if we look at gear, he has that thrombo for force wielders tunic. Um, he's wearing a Mandalorian helm, a Beskar one that we're hiding with, uh, show hat with hair there's a bunch of options in there for like hiding certain helmets making sure like beards are hidden or showing through the helmet or whatever um, and we've done the same thing with door so door just equipped this helmet in between episodes we had asha make it for him and hopefully that means fewer head injuries and less downing than we've seen the past couple episodes uh also managed to snag him a new uh color crystal for his lightsaber so we grab bronze for him and then citro went ahead and put the green one in um i'm thinking you know sit like rad is the master and dora is the apprentice in this situation i think citro is going to be uh brovi's master so brovi will apprentice with citro um and so having them have like green and blue just kind of like felt very like traditional Jedi for me. You might notice that Brovi has like a bionic eye during his last growth moment. Um, he became a body modder. Uh, so we gave him some bionics, uh, an arm, a leg, an eye. And because of that, he is um, delighted. Uh, three artificial enhancements. So um, he's doing well. Uh, what else is going on here? We have Asha, who's basically in the gear that she came in, other than we managed to snag that, um, that grav pack for her, right? So she has this Vanimatric grav pack, uh, that makes her really fast and gives her 10 extremely far jumps, right? So she can jump all the way down there. Um, you know, and kind of throughout the series, uh, we've been role-playing that Asha has been kind of like teaching Lissandra how to do armor crafting as well. So Lissandra made herself this locust armor. She made herself a cataphract helm or acquired one somewhere. And Rada, Lissandra's daughter, Brad's daughter, uh, is pretty much taking up after mom. So Lissandra made her some locust armor also. And then we picked up an absolver helm. Uh, and I'll just have her do like a little walk so you guys can see the side profile of it. It's a pretty cool looking helm. So I feel like uh, she ended up with like a pretty unique outfit. I think once we got the absolver helm on her and kind of like the heavier armor, I was like, oh, we have to give her a bigger gun. So um, she's rocking the rotary cannon now. Uh, over here, we have mostly our kind of like our OG rebel crew, right? So we started with Armella, Harlock, Bell, and Ven. Uh, they eventually found Rad and Asha, and then they had Arlock and they had Renata. So our little purple Wookiee and our little Wookiee-colored Twi'lek um, rocking mostly, what, rebel gear, rebel jackets. Um, Harlock's wearing, like, a tank top or something uh, ridiculous, and it felt, like, very Wookiee. Down here we have, uh, you know, all these, like, former stormtroopers that deserted the Empire and have joined us. Uh, they're wearing Rebel Forest gear, Rebel Forest helms, except Aaron, who's rocking the same, like, Imperial military outfit that uh, he arrived in. And then over here we've just had, like, some random joiners, some random recruits. Uh, you know, a couple of them wearing our, like, rebel outfits. Thelka turned in her duster for uh, Officer Jacket. She's been with us since pretty early on. I think she was the first person who joined us or that we rescued. Uh, Potter managed to grab the other part of our Absolver gear that we managed to pick up. So he's wearing the Absolver armor, and we threw a marine helmet on him so that he and Noche don't look like twins. Um... And then Colin, of course, the child of Condra and Emin here. Uh, Asha, another joiner, uh, just rocking a duster and some Mandalorian gear under it. So uh, that's how things are looking right now. We'll go ahead and like let them do their things and meander while we take a look at the base. Uh, so I built all these ships, all of them functional, none of them props. I should have just made them props, but... I thought we might need multiple ships for the last mission, and I don't think we do. Well, we might use one of them, uh, but the Rebels are actually going to send over uh, 
send us a ride. So we'll take that when it gets here. Uh, we did a little quest to grab a chem fuel reactor, just like a small outpost. And then this is the like the hole in the wall that I've been storing our anti-green warheads. And we managed to sell off 80 of them, uh, which felt pretty ridiculous after getting rid of 70, you know, a couple episodes ago. Uh, nothing around here has like changed too much. Uh, in order to build all these ships, we did need a lot of cloth. So I built some more hydroponics. We're growing heel root now because we're pretty solid on cloth. Like we're not building any more big cloth projects. I did put in a bunch of props, um, just to make the base feel a little bit more lived in. Um, I think these have been here for a couple episodes, but we haven't really like looked at them. Harlock's been going ham on creating art. And we switched this back to a prison, and we switched all these beds back to normal beds. Um, Zitro and Renata actually got together in between yesterday and today's episode, and I thought that was super creepy because Zitro looks like a creepy old man, but he's actually 20 and 10 days, and Renata is 20 and 13 days. So she's actually three days older than him. Uh, so I guess, like, good for them. Uh, and then kind of the other big thing that we did in between episodes is, um, you know, we made this area more for ships. We built some pod launchers and whatnot, uh, mostly just for aesthetics, right? And then we moved our outdoor storage over here. So we have a little stockpile. We have our outdoor trade beacon. Um, you know, we've, we've had these containers up for a bit. And so I was like, oh, it would make sense for, for us to do our outdoor storage over on this side. And then right before that elephant quest completed, I built this so that the shuttle would just have somewhere to land so that we could load up the elephants pretty easily. But yeah, that's all that's going on. We haven't like zoomed in here in a while, but we filled it all with art that we've either stolen or that uh, Harlock has made. So I guess we'll grab our Mela and we will tell her to contact the rebels. We'll like speed things up since she was on her way out of the base. And we will accept our final mission. So we'll hit start mission. We'll confirm. This is our ride. I think we can pretty much like load up everyone in this. And that's kind of what we're going to do. Not quite. We're going to load a few people up in one of these guys. Um, so let's grab, let's grab like, well, let's grab meals first. So we're going to grab survival meals. We're going to grab our Bacta, and we will grab some medicine, just in case. And so we're going to send Ven, and maybe just like the deserters, and Zitro for an infiltration mission. Oh, how much can these guys hold, actually? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I think that's too many. Let's kick Emin out. Let's kick Chandra out. And then also let's grab these generators, these shield generators. We'll accept and let them load up there and then we'll load up the next shuttle. Cool. So that is ready to go. Basically, everyone else that's, like, left, we will take with us. We'll leave Arlock here. We'll leave Noche and Ash here. And Potter, I guess we'll bring you with us. Let's stick you up there, though, because I like having Armella just, like, easily accessible at the end. So we'll grab these folks and tell them to get into this shuttle. There aren't any controls here. It is just a kind of, like, grab people and right-click to enter the shuttle. Okay, we have Dorna coming in. Okay, so we'll tell them to launch, and we're going to follow... As soon as they show up on the world map, there they are. We'll click on Ven, and we're going to head, okay, way up there. We're going to head right there, and we'll speed things up. 
Okay. And so once we land, I'll pause the game and we will take a look around the map. It's pretty exceptional and pretty exciting. So um, we got some deserters that are going to be helping us. So these guys are arriving in the shuttle with us. But then also I think there is a couple other shuttles that will be landing with reinforcements. So this is, so there's like one up here and then one of these I think is our other reinforcements. Okay, so here's the game plan. We have a couple big guns up here. We have more big guns. We have some explosive guns there. I think we're gonna go in through this way. Actually, this way has the fewest guns. It depends on where we land. These guns won't be a problem once we get into range of them. On the map, we have 61 of these guys. We're going to have to fight through them to get to this control room. Basically, there's an area of control around this um, gun control station. So we're fighting through these guys to get to this gun control station. And once we get into the gun control station and have control of it, these nine hyper velocity cannons are going to start shooting at a target in orbit. And once we shoot at that, um, you know, that space station, um, we'll get a little indicator up in the top right that tells us how much health the space station has. And so basically we need to maintain control of these guns. We need to keep them powered until that space station is blown up. And that's how we win this mission. So we're going to let these guys trickle out towards us. So which way we are landing right here. And it sucks that we're landing just like right in front of these guns. Um, that is one thing that I wish would change about this. So it takes a little while for the guns to power up. Um, Rad, let's go ahead and have you do horse speed. Um, let's have you jump in. Oh. Let's have you just head this way. Door, are you out yet? You are. Let's have you shield yourself. Let's have you move in this way. And then everyone else, as they're like slowly exiting, let's get them up here. And as soon as we can, we'll have them firing at that gun. Uh... You come that way. Okay, these guys are filtering down this way. Okay. Belka, go ahead and get the cover. Uh, Brad, will you just like pull it for a second? Okay, and we have you guys. I don't want to control you, so we're just going to tell you guys to go do whatever. You're one of them also, right? Yep. Okay, you guys head in. You guys move up. Actually, take this turret out. Okay. And... How are we? These guys are all... There's so many of them. Okay. So we have a squadron over here, and that's it for support right now. Okay. We're going to move you guys in. Launch. Zoom in. We're going to land like ourselves right in the control room. Um, I think like literally right there. Okay, so things that I want to do in the control room is I want to get some sleeping spots, just like if we need to do some tending. We're going to have plenty of beds for it, so let's do that. Uh, I want to put a zone down.
and I'm going to restrict everyone to that zone. Um, then, where are you? You're right there. Let's have you just stand right here. Um, Zitro, let's have you stand at the door. And then the rest of you, let's get you guys in here. Um, shields. So let's get a shield around this guy. And let's get a shield. Yeah, let's just like put some shields up. Okay, and I want to expand the radius on these. And I want to be able to see them. Okay, so you guys... You guys will just like stand here. Uh, you can stand there and you can stand there. You... Let's uninstall this just so that we don't have like this giant thing in the way. And... Let's put like a stockpile zone over here. Okay, um, we need to start moving in with you guys. So, door, you are you on search and destroy? You are. Brad, where are you at? You're up there. Okay, cool. Um, let's grab you guys and you guys, and let's start heading in this way. door. Let's take out this turret. Okay. Citro, let's get you guys up here. And let's get you over here. Um, okay, you guys, okay, Rad and Dor, you guys are fine. Okay, let's head in. Okay, Imperials are fleeing. Nice. Um, I think we can claim doors now, right? So let's grab all the doors. Let's claim them. Let's get you guys off of search and destroy. Uh, and let's bring everyone into the control room. Okay, you guys. Our help is down. Then you can just like chill in the control room. Uh, you guys can chill in the control room. Okay, any injuries on our side? No injuries on our side. Okay, you can see the orbital that that space station is targeting us. We have this crazy, um, what is it? Imperial Mega High Shield that will protect us. So it'll protect us from bombardments. It's going to protect us from this like laser cutter as well. Um, and we are in a very cold map. We're at negative 10. I feel like, so back, what, back when our base got glassed, it was like 250 C outside. So what is the average temperature here? Negative 64 to negative eight. So we're like in a tolerable range. It is like springtime. Ooh, there are multiple lasers coming in. So these are just not heating up the outside, but they will stop once they hit the shield. So you can see our guns are firing, these hypervelocity guns. And this is actual debris from the space station, which is really cool. Hull integrity of the space station is 82%. And colonist needs rescue. Um, no, that's not a colonist. Um, okay, so Imperial response. There are Imperial strike forces on its way in 111 seconds. It looks like we already have some Imperials showing up. Yeah, okay. So let's hold this door open. Uh, Rad and door. Let's have you guys. Let's have you guys head out. Citro, where are you? Did you get any skills? No. Um, door, go ahead and shield yourself. 
Brad, go ahead and go at it. Okay, so we need to defend this console. If this console busts, then mission over. If we lose power, then mission over. So we need to be really careful about these these uh, capacitors, because I assume if we lose any of these capacitors, then that gun is out and it'll take us, we'll have to hold this longer, right? Okay, let's actually get you guys in because I don't want us fighting with these capacitors around. That might be easier said than done. So, looks like TIE Fighters are coming to bombard us, but this shield is going to prevent that bombardment from happening. Okay, you need to get out, dude. Do you have jump? You do not have jump. Okay, well, if we don't have jump, then let's... Let's do a... Horse Rage over here. See if we can get them to change targets. And then get door back. Okay, we can't get door back. Let's get Rad in. Seventy two percent on the hull integrity. Okay, we took a capacitor out there. We're losing this rail gun, probably. Um, do we have any more troops coming in? We don't. Okay. How many are here? That was 70 that came in? Brad, you are freaking insane. Door, go ahead and let Ben tend to you. Oh, this is ridiculous. We have another Imperial response coming in. 30 seconds. Okay, Hall Integrity is down to 57%. Yeah, we lost we lost one of these. But Rad is like holding still. I don't want to go out there and fire. I think the next group we just kinda like let them come in and we rely on our shields to protect us. Ooh, that's so crazy. Now that that shuttle is gone, you can like see all of them. A hundred? Are the more drop in down there? This is insane if like Rad is just gonna hold all of these. Due to triggering, okay, that's fine. Okay, firing again. These are taking, this one's taking a little damage. These capacitors are taking crazy amounts of damage. Let's see if we can get you into a spot where they're gonna hit that capacitor less. Oh, we can't. Okay, we can. Let's have Asha just like peek out this corner. Let's see if she can take him out without like destroying this capacitor. Okay, 
bad. What are you doing? He needs food, sleep. Oh, he might like fall asleep out here. We're at 47%. Okay, he needs some backup. We might lose this bank. Um, where is our next shield generator? Let's throw this right there. Oh, he's out. Turn that on. Let's turn up like max radius. Let's move it out a little. And let's grab you guys then. So let's have you guys pop out here. Let's see if we can get like rad out of this pickle. Hull integrity at 39%. Okay, let's move in. Okay, that's still good. Oh, are these guys fleeing? These guys are fleeing. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, Brad, as soon as you can get over here, get over here. to get 31%. We'll just like let them all go back now. Hopefully Rad can eat, maybe get a nap in. Okay, they're just like beating on the door that we claimed. So we lost one. We lost a capacitor for this one. Um, so we are down to like eight guns, but we are still, we're still like chipping away at it. There they go. I have no idea how we would do this without Rad. We we definitely would have needed like a bigger colony. Like this colony feels pretty big, but I've had I've had much bigger colonies. So, you know, if if with a colony this size, we just need like some super soldiers. Um, Dor took enough damage that he actually took his robe off. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's get you guys here and hull integrity 21% while we're firing off some more 17% 16 okay I wish there was like an indicator that would let us know when they're getting ready to fire. I think it might be like, maybe when all these are lit up, it, it's, it's ready. Okay, visibility change to news. Not a big deal. No, it's not that. I don't have any alerts about like any more incoming folks and all integrity is below 10. It's at 8% now. Seven. Look at all these chunks. How many? Over 200. 333 chunks from the space station. You are coming in to fight. That's fine. We'll let you walk right in. We are all napping. Um, and how much food do we have? 
Oh, did we, did we eat like all our food orders? We will unforbid all this food. I'm gonna expand area one so that they can come out here and eat if they need to. And we did it! Oh my god! Like one little stormtrooper coming for us. Didn't make it in time. Okay, that is... That's the end. Um, so the Empire, once a symbol of tyranny and oppression, has crumbled all over the planet. Brave rebels rose in a chorus of rebellion, breaking the change, chains of servitude that held them bound. Every child who now wakes to the dawn of freedom will remember and revere these names, the names of heroes to challenge, who dared to challenge the impossible. And there's our colonists. However, this is not the end, but merely a transition. With the Imperial Force now but ruins and their space station of burning wreckage fallen from the skies, a time for healing and rebuilding is upon us. The commanders, once loyal to the Empire, now surrender to the Outlander communities or lose themselves in a life of crime. There's no denying the truth. The world has changed forever. As you stand at the threshold of a new era, you remember this chapter of defiance and courage. The echoes of the Empire will serve as a reminder of your resilience, a testament to your unfaltering quest for freedom. You look ahead, knowing that you are stepping into a future built on hope, unity, and liberation. Oh man, what an awesome ending. That is, the, like, oh, I've enjoyed this mod pack so much, you guys. I, um, the Deserter mod has been exceptional. I think the retheme mods that um, were put out, like, what, during episode five or six of this playthrough, um, really, really complement the Star Wars aesthetic that I was going with, with the Outer Rim series, uh, along with the Deserter mods. So, like, huge thanks to like the mod authors um you know uh, uh just like i enjoy finding so many different ways to kind of like theme the game and play the game and this is probably like one of the most satisfied experiences that i've had with deserters rethemes and outer rim uh along with like all the other like um, unsaid mods that you guys can find in the mod pack and in the description and the link but i hope you guys enjoyed the playthrough as much as i did um and i hope if you didn't enjoy the playthrough as much as i did i hope that you are enjoying some variation of the mod pack and are having like the time of your life playing uh the deserters mod right now uh, anyhow we will escape here and so tomorrow we will We'll be back with our placeholder series, so we'll play that for a week. Uh, I am in the middle of assembling our next mod pack together, so as soon as we're done with placeholders for the week, uh, we'll start up a brand new series. We've done two spacer series in a row, so we're going to take it back to a little bit more primitive, a little bit more medieval, um, and play, play with some mechanics from some of the various medieval mods uh, that I haven't really like explored too much of. So I'm pretty excited about what's coming next. Um, from a storytelling perspective, you know, um, let's get these folks back home and we'll take a look at them. Okay, guys. And for as how the, for how the story ends, I think for the most part, I think this group of people really kind of like built and found a home here, right? Armella and Harlock, uh, Belle and Ven, they kind of started this rebel cell. Uh, Asha, who, you know, in the Mandalorian series, just suffered setback after setback. She lost both her children. She lost her first husband. She remarried and then ended up on this world alone and divorced, um, only to find Belle. And so I think she's finding a home here that she's um, actually going to hang around for, right? Before the Mandalorians, she fled the sacking or the siege of Mandalore. Um, and here she kind of helped these people take back their planet and armored them, taught, taught them her ways. Um, and I think she is, is fitting in here, right? Like Arlok is uh, a testament to her, like armoring this whole colony. Uh, Thelka, our first joiner, Jean Vaughn, I think um, 
I think they're pretty satisfied in this location. Aaron was our first disorder to come join us, and I think he is is happy to kind of continue on with this colony and see what they can do to kind of like rebuild this world. Kantra and Emin, Colin, obviously they've like found love and built a family together. So I think they're going to be hanging out for a really long time. And that's just kind of like how this colony will continue and persist. These folks, you know, various deserters, various joiners seeking refuge from the salt of the Imperial remnant. I think you know, for them, this is over and, you know, time for a new beginning. And they're just probably going to slowly like filter away and just kind of like pick up their, their own lives, whether that be like returning to what was normal to them before this Imperial remnant showed up or uh, taking advantage of like whatever it could be for the future. I think we have two other stories that are kind of happening here. Um, Rad is still on a mission to hunt down the Neosith Empire that he was born into left and has been like hunting down ever since. Um, and he really needs to see like them brought to an end, right? Um, and now he has a Padawan or an apprentice of some sort who's going to be taking on that mission with him. And Lysandra, who's just been like there to back him up on so many solo missions. Um, and you know, with what she's learned from Asha. Um, I feel like these guys are going to be a pretty unstoppable force and they are going to do what they can to head out into the galaxy and, and find the Neosith Empire and bring them down. These guys are on kind of a completely different mission, right? So we capture Zitro from, from a tribal faction um, and just kind of like taught him our ways and also realized that he was force sensitive. Um, and he's been training ever since he's come across, you know, the holocrons that we managed to pick up. He's had Rad to consult with, and he's also picked up some side trainers. So, um, you know, he's picked up some skills in the Frost Shaper tree, the Archotechus, and the Archon tree uh, with what he's been able to learn from those Psycasters. And he, of course, now has the responsibility of a Padawan of his very own um, and uh, a love. So... Uh, Renata is sad to be leaving her family, but, you know, she is ready for an adventure. I think they're going to head out into the galaxy to see what they can learn about unlocking their, like, their training, unlocking their force sensitivity, um, you know, what temples await them, um, what other force sensitives might they run into and learn from. But I don't think they would really hang out with this colony. Like, bro... Rovi here, like, fell from the sky, an escapee of the Neo-Sith Empire, uh, after Brad took their presence down on this planet, much like Dor. Um, and, you know, he's looking to continue his learning. So uh, I think they would, they might hang around here for a little while, but I think the three of them together are going to remain intact for a long time. Uh, whether we see them in a future RimWorld series or not, um, I think, I think that is... You know, I think that is open. Um, I don't have any specific plans for these three. I don't have any specific plans for this group of people. I do have plans for Brad. Um, and now that he's gotten an apprentice, I have ran plans for this group. And I think whether we see some returnees from our Return of the Sith series or maybe from the Mandalorian series, um, the next time we encounter Rad on his mission, um, or even from this series, I think all those are very likely, very possible. And so for now, we kind of end the story here. And of course, we will be back with more Star Wars content and we will continue to keep all of our Star Wars stories that we do on this channel connected. So um, as always, until next time, have a good one, guys. Bye.